Dutch around here. But then again, it's certainly cold enough for a Bavarian Christmas, and I suppose this is one way to keep warm if you really must wear shorts this time of year. But what better than a nice hot English cup of tea to keep you warm? And where better to have a tea party than here in the docks? The seeds of that revolutionary idea were sown in 1607, when a group of pilgrims were released from the jail here and eventually settled in America. They were followed in 1630 by another group of pilgrims who left the docks here and landed on the coast of Massachusetts. They named their settlement after the town that they left behind them, Boston. Welcome to Lincolnshire and the Close Show Christmas Road Show. The Lincolnshire Boston is famous for its stump, the 272 foot high tower of St Botolph's Church that can be seen from miles around. It's also where you'll find the Focus One Youth Centre, whose leader, Anne Dorian, wrote to us with the backing of some very influential people in the town to invite the Close Show Christmas Roadshow to Boston. Working with young people, I feel that they're so concerned with fashion and interested in fashion and changing trends, that it would be an ideal opportunity for them to work with people who are involved in the fashion industry. It will add a completely new dimension to the lives of the young people here in rural Lincolnshire. The small market town that we have here doesn't offer young people the, the choice and variety of fashions that you might get in a big city. Boston Standard supports the young people of the town and all the firefighters based at Boston hope that you will come here as the officer in charge of the police in the area, I am fully supportive. We would like to offer our support to the young people of Focus One Youth Centre. We, we are relishing the challenges that you're going to lay down for us and um, we're all eager to get started. Now one of the first things we've got to do is choose models for our catwalk shows. All week the local radio stations have been pumping out adverts inviting would-be models to turn up at the Focus One Youth Centre for our auditions and just look at the result. Everyone can be models, so we've given this team of Bostonians a transatlantic challenge. They're going to design their own waistcoats linking Boston, USA with their hometown. And to give them some helpful advice, we've drafted in Tom Gilby from the Waistcoat Gallery. What I don't want you really to do is to, to have a waistcoat and have one side with an American flag and the other side with an English flag. I want you to use inspiration. You can get braid, this sort of braid reminds you of American. You can take the braid down here, take the braid along, bring the braid over here. Fringing is another thing. Don't be frightened. So many things you can think of. When we asked for some of the best needleworkers in Boston, everyone automatically thought of these ladies, who spend most of their days running up curtains. They all work for Aldridge in the soft furnishing department and Oldridge is the one and only department store in Boston. So now ladies, I've got a fantastic challenge for you. We've got all this fabric and patterns from John Lewis's in London and what we'd like you to do is make your own ball gowns. But not only that, you have 10 days to do it in and you have to model them on the catwalk for us. Do you think you could take that on? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. To put on something like the Christmas Rose Show, we try to involve as many people from the community as we possibly can. And the one thing that is essential is to try and find a venue big enough. So we scoured the whole town looking for a suitable hall, and it was local quilt makers Fogarty's who came up with a brilliant idea. Part of their factory is undergoing reorganisation and is therefore empty. Now it's certainly got the space, but what we've got to do now is transform it as if by magic into one of the most fashionable venues in Lincolnshire. And for the first time, we've challenged the local community to design and build a catwalk. Timber merchants Harcross have supplied all the timber, and Mick Manning of the Blackfriars Arts Centre has been masterminding the project. Mick, have you ever built a catwalk before? Well, we've built some quite small ones when I used to work for Butlin's Holidays, but uh, this is certainly the biggest one we've had to come up with. You think it was a 
of the Christmas sales, but no, this morning tickets go on sale for our Christmas road show. Now, some of the money raised will go to the local youth centre and the rest will go to the children's ward of the local hospital. And just look at this queue, and this girl was actually here first. What's your name? Charlotte Berry. How long have you been here? Uh, since half past five. Since half past five. We've never done it before on a road show and someone came up with a rather adventurous idea of having some of our participants rollerblade down the catwalk. So we called on the expertise of Sven Taylor from Roadrunner in West London to put them through their paces. Good evening and welcome to the Fogarty's Fashion Theatre and the Christmas Clothes Show Roadshow. We're here at the invitation of the Focus One Youth Centre and you're going to be seeing this evening a lot of their members making their debut on the catwalk. Now, no Clothes Show Roadshow is complete unless we're embarrassing the life out of some poor unfortunate members in the audience. And tonight is no different because we're looking for three volunteers to join us up here on the catwalk. And our first volunteer is going to help us find out why the country's number one hairdresser keeps on winning the highest accolade in the hairdressing field. So ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the man that's won the Hairdresser of the Year award for the fourth time, Mr. Trevor Scorby. <laughs> Now we're going to put your skills to the test because we want a volunteer to surrender her barnet for you to style it. Um, so have you been sort of watching anyone as they came in? Did you? Well, I've had a little look, but I haven't approached right. anybody. But what I would ultimately like to do, so I can make a real transition, is to have someone with long hair and I can convert it into something completely different. Right. You want to do it? Right? Wow! Found somebody. So tell us your name. Rebecca. Rebecca, and you're going to trust yourself in Trevor's hands. Is there anything that you specifically would like him to do? Mm, just something exciting, something change. Something exciting. Oh, you're up for a change? Because yeah. you know he does Sinead O'Connor's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not that serious. But... Not that serious. <laughs> but you're definitely up for a change. Yeah, I don't mind. Now our second volunteer is needed for the Jeff Banked Masterclass, where in front of your very eyes, Jeff is going to create a stunning little number for Christmas. Would you, yeah? Very shy, you see, so didn't even put a hand out. Okay, come on, let's have a look. What's your name? Samantha. Samantha, and are you ready for a good transformation? Yeah. Are you willing to get down to your bra and knickers if necessary? <laughs> Tonight, we have something else that's very special. Um, we owe our thanks here um, to Anne Dorian. Where's Anne? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I... You told me you loved me like, just a moment ago. I had no idea this was going to happen. And so on with the show, and our first scene features a bunch of models we auditioned over a week ago at the Focus One Youth Centre, and here they are making their debut appearance on the catwalk. Helen Thomas is aged 16. Her ambition is to be a fashion stylist for a glossy magazine. Helen is a great fan of John Richmond, whose clothes she's modelling tonight. Donna Butler is age 20. Donna is currently doing a BTEC National Diploma in Nursery Nursing. Lisa Cox, just sweet 16. Lisa's a student at Boston High School and would like to become an English teacher. Helen Day is age 16 and Helen is a student at Boston High School. She's doing her A-levels in English History and Theatre Study. Heidi Corcoran is 18 years of age and Heidi is currently studying graphic design at Lincoln Art College. Alexandra Persinger is 17 years of age. If she grew a couple of inches, she would love to be a model and she dreams of owning something glamorous from Gianni Versace, 
Christian Lacroix. Abigail Bexton is 17 years of age and she's in the final year of her A-levels at Boston High School. Jennifer Stiles is just 15 years of age and she's doing her GCSEs and then wants to go on to art college. And just to show you that it's not just the Boston women that are talented, weren't they fabulous, but we've got some masculine talent modeling clothes by the innovative design team, Duffer of St. George. Adrian Tomes has set his sights on a runway of a different kind. He's studying four A-levels at Boston Grammar in the hope of joining the Royal Navy to become a pilot. Peter Dunn is studying for his A-levels at Boston College. He doesn't know exactly what he wants to do when he leaves, but he's beginning to like the idea of a model. Andy Davis, age 18, is currently studying A-level photography art. He told us although he's looking forward to doing a bit of modelling, he'd prefer to be photographing them. Martin York is 18 and he's no newcomer to the world of fashion as he's currently studying for the BTEC National Diploma in Fashion Design at Boston College. Shane Birch is 19 and he's currently a student at Boston College doing his GCSEs. One of his favourite subjects is drama. 17-year-old Jason Green likes to be called an agricultural technician. However, as a Brussels sprout grader, it means that the sprouts that go on the Christmas dinner table in Boston have probably passed through Jason's hand. Mark Everett is 21. Mark should know his way around tonight because he works here as a machinist for Fogarty's making quilts. Here's William Barton, age 17. He's doing the BTEC National Diploma in Business and Finance. This is my best friend in Boston. You're a star. She's lovely. Now, it's said that the largest sheep in the world is the Lincolnshire Longwall. And if you make a suit from the wool, it will last you forever. Now, there's some students at the Boston College who have just discovered the magic of wool. And we're going to show you their knitwear designs tonight, which were modelled by the youngsters which we chose at our audition. So me and my pal are going to leave the stage and enjoy this section. Come on, honey. came to Boston we bought designer Tom Gilby with us of the Waistcoat Gallery in London to set members of the Focus One Youth Centre a challenge to design an Anglo-American waistcoat to link Boston Lincolnshire with Boston Massachusetts and here are the results. Craig Evans on the right joined Focus One eight weeks ago. He spent four days making his waistcoat and hopes to be a BBC cameraman. With him is Ryan Gardner, whose waistcoat took him three evenings to make. Darren Smith, age 15, is a member of Focus One Youth Centre and thinks it's a great place to meet friends. Kelly Regan, age 15, Kelly's favourite subject at school is PE. It took her three evenings to make her waistcoat. Age 15, Danny Wilson is at the more at home on the football field than he is on a catwalk, but is doing exceptionally well tonight. 14-year-old Lee Ory wants to be a professional model now that he's taken part in the Christmas Roadshow. 
Here's Anuska Davis, age 14. Her ambition in life is to be a hairdresser and she's really enjoyed seeing how it's done professionally. Here's Jamie Brown, age 14. Jamie's waistcoat has incorporated the history of the two Bostons. Anita Bush is plumped for the longer length waistcoat. It was designed with the Boston Tea Party theme in mind. This is 14-year-old Andy Ward. The competition was a real challenge and he worked hard over four nights to customize his waistcoat. Here's our model of the moment, Martin Turner, age 21, who's currently doing a computer technology course. And his waistcoat took him six days to design and make. The theme is around rock and roll. Simon Thornton, age 25, has been a member of Focus One for about a year. His waistcoat took him five days to make and depicts the Mayflower ship and the Boston stump. Thank you. And now to choose the winner and give out the prize, we have Tom Gilby. Take this way. Oh, all right. <laughs> how long did it take? How long did it take you to make it? About five days. Did you do any research about the other Boston? I went to the library and got a book out. So would you like to go to the other Boston? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, young man, with the help of Richard Branson and Virgin Airlines, we're going to send you and three members of your family to Boston, USA. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is actually, with the help of Samantha, who you remember came out of the audience, willing to bear all, as it were, um, is to kind of try and produce an evening dress out of ribbon. We've actually taken a slip and we've just sewn some ordinary buttons around there. Uh, and what we're about to do is to weave a ribbon dress straight onto Samantha while she stands there. Is I'm now going to um, put strips around the back. for Boston to make another connection with North America, this time Hollywood. We gave a load of fabric from John Lewis to the ladies in the soft furnishing department at Aldred's, the departmental store in Boston. Their challenge was to create a glamorous Hollywood outfit and we managed to find some film star types to join them on the catwalk. Selena Skinner is age 20. She does occasionally make her own clothes but has never attempted something on this scale. Steve Colby, inspector for Lincolnshire Police, has been in the police force since he left school at 16. As for modelling, it's a whole new experience for him. Adrian Tubbs has been sewing since she was 14. She watches Dynasty, and Crystal Carrington is her Hollywood role model. Dick Massey is the inspector for Lincolnshire Police. He says that you need to be prepared for anything when you're a policeman, so he should be able to cope with fame after tonight. Karen Grief, age 25, has been sewing for Aldrids for two years. And the next of our Hollywood heroes is from Lincolnshire Fire Brigade. Andy Watkinson loves his job, especially when it includes a damsel in distress. Eileen Dorrington has worked at Aldrids for three years. And Big Steve Priestley is age 39. He's an inspector for Lincolnshire Police at six foot seven. Big Steve has met very few people who are willing to argue with him. Doris Travis went straight from school to work at Aldridge in 1948. Mick Holmes is a sergeant with the Lincolnshire Police. He's quite happy to be on the catwalk because as a policeman, he has to be on show and dress smartly all the time. Lorraine Ewing has been demonstrating sewing machines for almost seven years. Alan Broadbent is a sub-officer at Lincolnshire Fire Brigade. He enjoys the variety of the job, although he says being a fireman is not as glamorous as it looks. 
Barbara Sharp has been making soft furnishings at Aldred's for six years. She chose this dress because she thought it oozed glamour and sophistication. Bob Armit was a policeman for six years but decided to change careers 13 years ago and has been a fireman ever since. Linda Hammond has been sewing for a living for 10 years, but sewing for a hobby all her life. Her dashing partner is Howard Watson, a divisional commander at Lincolnshire Fire Brigade. Let's now welcome back somebody who accepted a challenge from us, uh, hairdresser of the year, Trevor Sorby. But first of all, we'd like to see the product of his work that he's been furiously laboring away at backstage. <laughs> What did you actually think of this look? I mean, it's on my like share, isn't it? <laughs> it's wild. I uh, love the wave. <laughs> so where is he? That Trevor Sorby. <laughs> I must confess, Trevor, I thought you were actually going to cut it short and shock everybody that way, and you've done the reverse thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've added hair to it, and I think, personally, she looks fantastic. She looks like a, uh, an Italian countess. Like that. I mean, she looks brilliant. We've been making great play throughout the show on our connections with America. So when we took Anne Dorian backstage, we decided to bring her back on to the strains of Rule Britannia. Britannia. Silly. <laughs> <laughs> have no, you enjoyed it now? Yeah, you I have. Everybody here different. has actually enjoyed yeah. Close Show coming to Boston. Absolutely. Look at them all. They're all happy, aren't they? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Well, we'd like to say thank you to everyone in Boston for help making the Christmas Close Show Roadshow such a success. And to Anne Dorian and all her team at the Youth Centre Focus One for their energy and enthusiasm. And all I want to do is wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. We'll be back in the new year. But now, a big round of applause for the Boston Showstoppers. <laughs> Helen Thomas is aged 16. This is the second time Helen has taken to the catwalk tonight. And this time she's wearing a dress by Thomas Starczewski. Donna Butler is age 20 and loves her Starchevsky outfit, and so she should, because he's the darling of London society and dresses, amongst others, Princess You-Know-Who. 16-year-old Lisa Cox simply loves her outfit also, but she's a bit worried about the shoes because she isn't used to wearing high heels, but we think she's doing brilliantly. 16-year-old Helen Day said to us this evening that her boyfriend always watches Naomi Campbell on the clothes show. Well, now he can watch me. 18-year-old Heidi Corcoran loves her dress. And she thinks she would wear it if she was ever invited to a film premiere. 17-year-old Alexandra Persinger thinks her dress is glamorous and elegant, but doesn't think she could wear it in Boston. Abigail Bexton is just 17 and thinks her dress is outrageous. She loves the dresses that Thomas does for the younger members of the royal family. Jennifer Stiles, just 15 and loves dressing up. And she thinks the best thing about the road show is having her hair and makeup done for her. <laughs>